It's 1903 in the Lower East Side of New York City, and a group of Jewish men meet in a local cobbler store to discuss a mutual problem. It seems that a local businessman, Gergerman, has been threatening their businesses, and they need help. The cobbler Pincus asks what he can do about it, for Gergerman is not his customer. The group of men then hand Pincus a pair of shoes and tell Pincus that he is now. Later that night, Pincus sits down with the shoes and starts to repair them on a mystical-looking stitcher machine. His son pops his head in and asks his father about the machine, so his father explains why it's so special. Apparently, the stitcher machine was gifted to his grandfather by an angel, Eliyahu Hanavi disguised as a wandering vagrant. The grandfather gave this hidden angel food and shelter for the night, when no one else would, and in exchange, the vagrant left him the magical stitcher. In modern-day New York, Max Smirkin makes his way to work. He looks tired and a little depressed. We get the sense that he isn't living the life that he's particularly pleased with. His work is that of a cobbler, and he owns a store in the Lower East Side of New York City. He opens the store and gets about, fixing up a pair of boots. Although he may look a little bored with it all, he's clearly a master of his profession. Max is outside having a coffee when he notices his attractive neighbor, Taryn, talking on the phone. Her driver packs her car for her as she asks Max for a light. He doesn't have one, but the driver does. He continues to watch in envy as Taryn's boyfriend, Emiliano, approaches and packs the car with her. It's then that Jimmy approaches. He owns the barber shop next door to Max. And the two talk for a moment as Jimmy asks Max about his love life. He almost sounds concerned for Max, worried about his mental health and well-being. Max ponders on his own place in the world. If he's doing the right thing with his life, he doesn't seem to think that he is. Max is eating lunch when a local activist named Carmen approaches him. First, there's a misunderstanding. As she asks to see the owner of the store and Max tells her it's his father. She thinks that means he's around, but Max waves it off, suggesting that his father might own the store but is no longer in the picture. Carmen then explains that she works for an organization, which is dedicated to the preservation of the Lower East Side. And right now, they're trying to stop real estate developers from turning the neighborhood into something that it's not. She tells them that the developers are paying huge amounts of money to kick people out of their houses. And Max suggests that maybe he wants the money, that he would be more than happy to leave. Cinema recap here. We've got a little challenge that'll take five seconds, and it will change your life forever. You ready? All you gotta do is like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and you'll receive 10 free years of good luck. It's as simple as that. Carmen pushes back. She drags him outside, makes him take in how beautiful this city is, that it has a history that needs to be preserved. She makes him sign a petition, and then invites him to a rally in the city. An old man, Mr. Solomon, is being kicked out of his apartment, and he refuses to budge. She tells him to come and get involved. He says he'll think about it, but it looks doubtful. That night, Max heads back to the house which he lives in with his mother. His mother is clearly a little senile, and she suggests that Max asks out a girl from high school, despite the fact that this girl has been married for 10 years and has three kids. The next day at work, Max is forced to clean the shoes of an obnoxious man named Ludlow. Ludlow brags about his watches, how much he earns, and how much of a player he is. He then hands over the pair of shoes to be resold, demanding that they're ready for tonight. Max tells him that the store closes at 6 p.m., and Ludlow threatens him, saying that they close when Ludlow gets his shoes. He then laughs it off and leaves the store. That night, Max is fixing Ludlow's shoes when his stitcher machine breaks. He wanders down to the basement to see if he has another one and comes across the same machine from the opening scene. He uses it to fix Ludlow's shoes, while Jimmy walks in and admires the machine. Max makes another small comment about his father leaving him, which Jimmy dismisses. Later, Max sits about the store waiting for Ludlow to arrive. As he waits, he decides to try on Ludlow's shoes. When Max looks in the mirror, he realizes that he has turned into Ludlow himself. He can't believe it freaking out and taking the shoes off. But then he tries on another random pair and is confused when nothing happens. That's when he figures it out. He hurries downstairs and checks the stitcher machine, realizing that the machine is responsible for the change. It's now that Max does a little digging. He moves through the store, collecting all the shoes that are his size. He then fixes them all on the magic machine, trying each pair on. To his delight, with each pair of shoes comes with a new face, a new body, and a new life. The next day, he puts on a random pair of shoes and goes next door to see Jimmy. Jimmy obviously has no idea who he is, which confirms once and for all that Max isn't imagining any of this, that this is real. It's time to have some fun. 
a montage of the different types of people who come through Max's store, people of all shapes and sizes. As they hand the shoes off, Max fixes them and then wears them about town. He gets himself free meals and even impersonates Ludlow so that he can steal a man's shoes and then steal his car. That night, he comes home to find his mother in bed. He brings her flowers and tells her about how good his day was, the best in a long time. He asks her if she wishes she was somebody else, but she just tells him that she wishes she was her mother. He then asks her if there was one thing she could do, what would it be? She tells them that all she wants is a dinner with his father one last time. The next day, his attractive neighbor Taryn drops off her boyfriend's shoes to fix. Max sees that they're the same size as his. Excited, he puts the shoes on, becomes Emiliano, and goes to a bar. Almost right away, a woman recognizes him and picks him up. She knows he has a girlfriend, but doesn't care, convincing him to take her home. But when she learns that he lives in a poor part of town with his mother, she kicks him out of the taxi. Max then decides to check out Emiliano's home instead. Whilst inside, he accidentally walks in on Taryn in the shower. She thinks that it's Emiliano and tries to pull him into the shower with her. Max is about to join her, but then realizes that if he takes the shoes off, he'll turn back to himself. He apologizes and quickly runs from the apartment. The next day, he bumps into Carmen on the street. They chat and flirt a little, and she tries to get him to come to the office and get involved. He thinks about it and decides to go down there in someone else's shoes. But even then, he chickens out at the last minute, unable to go in. That night, Max puts on his father's shoes. He then sets up a dinner between he and his mother, all while looking like his father. It's a romantic night and his mother doesn't question where he's been all this time. She's just delighted that he's back. They eat, they laugh, they dance, and they hold one another. It's truly a scenic, perfect moment. Before taking the shoes off that night, Max says goodbye to his father for the last time. The next morning, Max walks into his mother's room to find that she's passed on. He holds a funeral for her, but ultimately he blames himself. He doesn't think he did enough. He can't even afford a decent headstone. Jimmy offers to help him, but Max turns him down. He doesn't deserve any help. Later that week, he's back at his store when Ludlow walks in. Ludlow demands to know where he's been all week, and Max tells him about his dead mother. Ludlow doesn't seem to care, and even insults her. When Ludlow asks for his shoes, Max tells him that he needs the ticket, which Ludlow doesn't have. Ludlow threatens him, but he says he'll be back the next day. Angry now, Max stalks Ludlow. He uses several different pairs of shoes making sure he doesn't get recognized and follows Ludlow back to his apartment. Once Ludlow's gone, he puts Ludlow's shoes on and enters his apartment. Ludlow's girlfriend's there, and thinking it to be Ludlow, she argues with him, and then she tells him she's leaving him for good. Max just looks relieved that she's gone. He searches Ludlow's apartment, hunting down his watch collection. At one stage, he finds a suitcase filled with guns and a taser. Curious, he accidentally tasers himself and wakes up hours later. In a panic, he rushes from the apartment, only to run headfirst into Ludlow. Ludlow freaks out for a moment and then punches Max as himself in the face. They get into a fight, and it looks like Max might actually be killed. But then he manages to get his hand on the taser and knocks Ludlow out. Max ties Ludlow up, and when he wakes, he interrogates him. First as a young boy, asking where he keeps his watches. He then comes back into a room as a trans woman, which confuses Ludlow more than anything. He asks Ludlow again where the watches are, and Ludlow tries to hold, but relents when Max threatens to taser him. Ludlow tells him where the watches are hidden, and Max eagerly goes and gets him. He's about to knock Ludlow back out when there's a knock at the door. It's Ludlow's boys, here to collect him. Ludlow tells Max he has to go and collect $50,000 for a job, so Max decides that he'll do it for him, and then steal the money. Disguised as Ludlow, he leaves the apartment with two men. On the way, they stop off at a warehouse where a snitch, Patrick, is beaten to death. Max demands that they let him go rather than killing him. They all look confused, but end in agreeing. Next, Max is taken to the home of Elaine Greenwald, who hands him $50,000 with the request that the trash get taken out on Grand Street by Friday. It's not clear what the job is, but Max eagerly takes the money. Dressed as the trans woman, Max returns to Ludlow's apartment to knock him out and untie him. Unfortunately, Ludlow has broken his bonds and the two get into a fight. Max manages to confuse Ludlow by kicking off his shoes and turning back into himself, and this gives him enough time to fight back. But in the scuffle, he accidentally kills Ludlow by stabbing him in the throat with a stiletto. Distraught and ridden by guilt, Max turns himself into the police. He tells them everything, but when he takes them to Ludlow's apartment, the body, the blood, and the weapons are all gone. He can't explain it, and the cops have no choice but to let him go. 
Confused, he heads back to his store where his bag of shoes, the money, and the stiletto are sitting and waiting for him. Is it possible he imagined it all? Distressed now, Max tries to hail a taxi when Jimmy comes out to see what's wrong. Max tries to deflect, but Jimmy is clearly worried. He tells him that this is just how his father was behaving before he left. Max doesn't understand what he's saying and Jimmy explains that his father didn't just leave because he was sick of it all. He left because he had to, because he was in trouble. Max is furious that Jimmy never told him, but Jimmy says that his father made him promise to keep it a secret. Disguised as the trans woman, Max attempts to return the money back to Elaine. She isn't happy and one of her goons knocks him out. Hours later, Max wakes up in the back of a car. Thinking quickly, he puts on the shoes of a man he knows to be dead, and then transforms into some sort of zombie-like creature. He screams at the men driving, who freak out and crash the car. Max quickly flees, but not before scaring the pants off some unsuspecting children. Back at work, Max puts all the pieces together. The job that Ludlow was hired to do was to kill the same man that Carmen was trying to protect from being evicted, Mr. Solomon. Elaine was going to burn the apartment to the ground and get him out. He rushes to tell this to Carmen and together, they both go and see the old man. Mr. Solomon reveals that he'll not leave the apartment, even under the threat of death. Thinking quickly, Max asks Mr. Solomon what size his shoes are. The next day, Mr. Solomon, possibly Max, approaches Elaine and tells her that he'll move out so long as she gives him $100,000 and a bus ticket to Chicago where his daughter lives. She agrees and sends two henchmen over to his apartment the next day to pick him up and put him on the bus. Before entering his apartment, Mr. Solomon makes the two henchmen take their shoes off, which they do, only to return and find them missing. With Mr. Solomon on his way to Chicago now, along with one of the henchmen, Elaine tells the other henchmen to sweep the apartment building and make sure it's empty. He does just that, but Max uses the shoes to trick him and then knock him out. While impersonating the henchman, he calls Elaine and tells her the job is done. In Chicago, Mr. Solomon arrives with one of the henchmen. When they arrive, police show up and arrest the henchman, and Mr. Solomon smiles and walks off. Elaine walks into Mr. Solomon's apartment, shocked to find him there. She tells him she's through playing games, and if he doesn't leave now, she'll burn the entire place down with him in it, and then she'll kill his daughter too. It's now that the doors behind her open up, revealing a camera crew to be hidden the whole time. They got the whole thing on film, especially the part where she threatened to kill him and his daughter. The next day, we see via newspaper heading that Elaine was arrested. Carmen walks into the store, claiming that it's because she has shoes that she needs fixed. But then she asks Max if he would want to have dinner next Friday. He's confused, thinking it's for a rally. But then she explains that she just wants to have dinner with him. And Max agrees. He couldn't look more pleased. Disguised as Ludlow, Max tracks down Ludlow's ex-girlfriend and gives her the watches he stole. But as Ludlow leaves the apartment, the snitch Patrick he let live earlier grabs him and forces him into a car. He tells Max that he's going to kill him, even though Max let him live before. But before they get the chance, the car is sideswiped by a truck and everything goes black. Max wakes up in Jimmy's barber shop. He doesn't understand what's going on and that's when Jimmy explains everything. Jimmy takes off his shoes, revealing himself to have been Max's father the whole time. At first, Max is relieved. He can't believe that his father's back. But then he's furious, demanding to know what happened and why he left. Max's father explains that he had to for his family's safety. Max doesn't understand. His father then takes him down to the basement, where he reveals there to be a secret room filled with rows and rows of beautiful shoes, all belonging to famous people throughout history. He explains that this is Max's birthright that the art of cobbling can be traced back generations. What's more, he even has a nice car, a personal driver, and an apartment in Brooklyn, which now belongs to Max. As Max and his father drive across the bridge to Brooklyn, his father tells him the story of how this all began, that of the vagrant turning up on their great, great, great grandfather's doorstep, looking for food and shelter. We get the sense that Max's life is finally starting to turn around. This was a recap of the film The Cobbler, produced by Image Entertainment and released in 2014. Directed by Tom McCarthy, it stars Adam Sandler, Steve Buscemi, Dustin Hoffman, and Method Man. If you were Max, whose shoes would you want to wear for a day? Tell us with the hashtag CinemaRecap in the comments.